this is the CXC, CSEC chemistry paper two from May, June, 2023. Right, so we're just going to get right into it. Um, we are zooming in on question one, the bite size edition. Giving you a breakdown of what, your answer, what the answer should be. What CXC accepts, you know, it, it might vary, but we, um, as best as possible, will aim to give the correct answers, right? So, so number one is your good old data analysis um, question. We can always depend on that. Um, number one here, we're um, being asked not to spend more than 30 minutes on question one. No, number one, hydrogen peroxide H2O2 decomposes to produce oxygen and water in the presence of potassium iodide as a catalyst. The effect of the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide on the rate of reaction was investigated. For each experiment, the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide was changed and the time taken for the hydrogen peroxide to decompose was measured using a stop clock as shown in figure one. So part one of A, define the term rate of reaction. Change in concentration of reactant or product per unit time. Anything having to do with rate, there has to be, um, time has to be measured. Define the term catalyst. So it's a substance that is used to speed up the rate of a reaction but remains chemically unchanged in the process. So the catalyst does not take part in the reaction. We could put that, we could state that as well. A substance used to speed up the rate of a reaction but does not take part in the reaction. All right, so that will give us three marks. All right, so part B, for each experiment shown on the stop clocks in figure one on page four, record in table one, the time taken for the hydrogen peroxide to decompose. Write down these values to be used in our table a little later on before we get into anything um, big. So at first, we always look to see what the scale is on whatever the instrument is. Each of those stroke there is representing one second. So um, for the first one, in experiment one, um, this is 59. In experiment two, we have this at 42. In experiment three, this is at 31. In experiment four, this is at 25. In experiment five, this is at 21. So we're going to record those. We're going to keep those close by for a little later on. So we're going to do that. We made a note of those um, times. So we just need to fill in that in the time column. And then after that, in part C, we're just going to do everything in one. In part C, we're to complete table one by calculating the rate of reaction. This time the rate of reaction is one over time and they want it calculated to three decimal places for each of the experiments. So, the first one, we had mentioned that the first one, for the first one, the time is 59 seconds. Second one is 42 seconds. The third one, 31 seconds. The fourth one, 25 seconds. The fifth one, 21 seconds. And we're just going to take the inverse of those to say one divided by 59, and that will give us 0 0.017. That's three decimal places. Then one divided by 42, 0.024. One divided by 31, 0.032. One divided by 25, 0 0.040. Three decimal places. And then one divided by 21, which would be 0 0.048. So we're going to keep these in mind, we have to bear these in mind because we're going to um, now use these to actually plot our graph. 
Using the axis provided in figure 2 on page 7, plot a graph of rate of reaction versus concentration of hydrogen peroxide from the information in table 1. Draw the line of best fit through the points. And this is for 5 marks. So we're going to head on over to our graph sheet and we're going to plot a graph of rate of reaction versus concentration. So rate of reaction here is our dependent variable. The rate of reaction will get its value from the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide. So the hydrogen peroxide then is the independent, the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide is the independent variable that goes on the x-axis. And then our responding, then our responding variable or our dependent variable is our rate of reaction that goes on the y-axis. So let's go, let's figure out, the, let's go, let's figure out the scales on each axis and then let's plot and then let's draw our line of base fit and get five marks. All right, so we have our values that we're going to plot. We wrote them down a little while ago. So we just go right into plotting. But before we plot, we have to establish, we have to figure out the scale in each case. All right, so on the, let's look, on the x-axis, we find that um, 2cm, they use 2cm, 2cm to represent 0 0.05 units, right? So that means that each of those little milli, what's that? Each of those millimeter is going up by 0 0.005. Each of those little millimeters is going up by 0 0.005. And on the y-axis, we're seeing where 2 cm, 2 centimeters, um, they're, they're being used here to represent 0 0.005. So it means that each of those, each of those millimeter. That's the tiny box, each of those right here. That's the one I can actually touch. Each of those would be representing zero point. Each of those would be representing zero point zero 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 five. So at zero point one mole per dm cube. The rate there is 0 0.017. So we need to find 0 0.017. So this is 0 0.015. So this would be 0. Okay. Don't need to mark that. So we have 0 0.015 there. So 0 0.016, 0 0.017. And we would circle this. And then the next one. 0.15 is 0 0.024, so we find 0.15, then we go up to 0.024, that's 0 0.025 here, so 2, 2 behind, let's see, 0 0.02, 0 0.021, 0 0.022, 0 0.023, and 0 0.024. All right, and then... Following that, we have 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and that would be um, 0 0.032, 0 0.032, 0 0.032 would be here. We're circling, we can use encircle dots, or we can use X's. All right, and then the next one, 0 0.0, 0 sorry, 0 0.25. 0 0.25 on the x. And for that one, we have 0 0.04, 0 0.25 and 0 0.04. So that would be here. And then after that, we now have 0 0.30 and 0. Point, corresponding with that, 0 0.30, we have 0 0.048. 0 0.048 would be, it would be here. All right. So the next thing that we would need to do 
is to know, so we've plotted all our points, all five points correctly. The next thing would be to know, draw our line of best fit. Now our line of best fit does not always have to go through the origin, but it appears that this one would actually go through the origin. So let's do that. We would need a ruler to do it. I'm exempted based on what I'm using, but you would use your ruler. You try to get all the points to fall on this on this on a straight line. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, you try if they don't, then you try to get as many of them falling on the line as possible with an equal number falling off. But this this seems like a good trend line. Or that will get um them falling falling on a straight line here. Even if it did not go to the origin, that would have been fine. So we're now going to move on to the questions um, using this very, this very graph that we have plotted. All right, so we're at part E. Using your graph, well, part one of E, describe the relationship between the rate of reaction and the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide for two marks. So we'd need to go back to our graph and look to see what what the relationship is. We look to see how the rate is being affected by changing the concentration. So let us see what's happening here. So from this, we're seeing that, what are we seeing? We're seeing that as, as the, so follow on the x-axis, as the concentration increases, so increases taking place here, let's use green, so as the concentration is increasing, as we're going over here, we're seeing that, hey, the rate is also increasing. So we're seeing that as the concentration of the peroxide increases, the rate of the reaction increases as well. So we would need to, we would need to state that. So we just need to toggle between. So we're flipping pages now. So we're going, we're going, we're going between pages. So we need to write that down as the concentration of peroxide increases, the rate of the reaction increases. Right, and then the next question, they want us to determine the concentration of the hydrogen peroxide given that the rate of reaction is 0 0.045 per second, all right? So we would need to go back and we would find 0 0.045 per second on the y-axis. So we need to find 0 0.045 seconds per second rather on the y-axis. So let's use a different color to represent this. And once we find it on the y-axis, we're going to draw a line from it going across. And wherever that line cuts our base fit line, our curve, we're going to draw a line or a straight line from that coming down to cut the x-axis. Wherever it cuts, wherever it cuts the x-axis, Right, did we come all the way or we need to come all the way? All right, and from what we see here, this looks like it is zero point zero point two, sorry, zero point two five six. So that we'll write it boldly. So that is zero point two five six mole per dm cube that would be the concentration okay so we make a note of that and then so in part f we are to calculate the mass of the hydrogen peroxide present in the concentration identified in E2 
which um, is 0 0.25 moles per dm cube. So we're pretty much converting here from moles to from moles to mass. Molar concentration, it's it's the same as saying. So mass concentration here is the same as saying moles being converted to grams but the number of moles is in a set volume so we say moles over dm cube or, or moles per dm cube now in order for us to move from moles to to mass we'd have to multiply by the molar mass which is in grams per mole and if we look at this we see that mole will cancel out mole and will be left with grams per dm cube so this will give us this will be 0 0.256 moles per dm cube times 34.01 grams per mole and this looks like a lot of working out for one we're not just working, we're not just looking for the answer, we're looking at how we arrive at the answer. So we're teaching, we're doing everything all in one. So that's 0 0.256 times 34.01. And that will give us, well, everything so far has been to three decimal places. So this is, and then we have three decimal places here. So we'll just be consistent. So this is 8. Point seven zero seven grams per dm cube, and they want us to know write a balanced chemical equation including state symbols to so show the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. All right, so hydrogen peroxide, you know, pure hydrogen peroxide is a liquid, but they were varying the concentration here, so it means that it would be a uh, a solution of a liquid in a liquid. Peroxide is the solute and the water is the solvent. So we would write H2O2, very important. It's not the same as water. That second two makes a big difference. Don't take my word for it. Or you should take my word for it. Don't want you to try drinking this now. All right, so this will give us H2O, which is a liquid plus we'll get O2 gas. So to balance this, we would need to put a two. The oxygens are off. We have three on the um, right side, two on the, on the left side. Now if we put a two here and a two here, that would fix pretty much everything for everyone. So that's the balanced equation for three more marks and 25 marks, full marks. Let's check our time. Did we spend more than 30 minutes on this question? All right. And just like that, we've come to the end of um, another workout. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and be sure to check out the other materials that we have on this channel. No, thank you for joining Kim with Kim. Couple later.